Most golfers, when they rock up to the course, don't have a clear plan on how they're gonna play in order to shoot the lowest score. I'm gonna show you a strategy called Decade, how we make a good decision off from the tee and how we choose the right target into the greens to basically reduce the risk of a high number and have more birdie looks. So what we need to understand off the tee is what a dispersion or shot pattern is. If we take this driver, for example, and we imagine from side to side, we've got 60 yard window. The center, we've got 30 yards each side. What that means is if I hit driver around about 280, I'm gonna hit into a window of 60 yards on the fly. When we are then making a decision, we wanna make sure we've got at least 60 yards between two hazards. So at least 65 yards to give some room for maneuver. So if I've got water here and I've got a potential lost ball here, we know that hitting driver doesn't really make much sense. Whereas if I've got water here and just normal rough here where I'm not gonna lose a ball, albeit the center of the fairway still here, we would wanna move that target a little bit to the right to take out this hazard. Then we can make the correct call on whether we hit driver or we move back to a shorter club that naturally will have a smaller dispersion zone based on the loft and the length of the shaft. So this first hole here at the Hotchkin course, Wardle Spa, great design. What we can see is a bunker on the right that if we go in there, we are not able to get on the green. The same, we've got an even deeper bunker on the left. We're not getting on the green. So we can almost class them as a penalty hazard. We're gonna at least have to lay up and that's gonna bring in bogey or worse. It's into wind. Now the bunker on the right is 240. I can clear that bunker, meaning I can actually almost just treat this as a normal 60 yard zone. If you can't clear that bunker, in reality, we need to choose a target and a club that takes that penalty out, but also accept that the hole is probably gonna play as a bogey. So we can be smart with our strategy to take out that double and triple by just choosing the correct club off the tee. So the key for me here is hitting a driver, knowing I've got the right club, I've got enough of that dispersion zone at 67 plus yards wide. I'm just gonna aim in the center of my shot pattern and commit as hard as I can. Perfect. So with this next tee shot, we've got a completely different challenge. We've got a bunker that is a penalty shot that is we're coming out almost sideways consistently, but it's at 260. To carry that bunker is 280 and it's downwind. Now for my distance, I can just about carry that bunker with a solid hit, but that means I'm bringing that bunker also into play. Whereas with it being downwind, I can just hit an iron down there to around about 250. Although it leaves a longer approach shot, it's actually a more reliable shot. If we look at this as the width of the landing zone, we've got the bunker that comes all the way here, we've got a bit of fairway and then the heather. If we go back to those dispersion and shot patterns, if I was to hit driver, I can't move my center line further right to where the fairway is because then that means a lot of my shots will still will end up deep in the heather, which is still no good. So we've got to go, this isn't driver today. I've got to lay up short into the bigger zone and play with a longer approach shot but knowing what club to get to that 250 zone is also key. Just because I hit free iron one day doesn't mean I keep hitting free iron. Choose the club that gets to the zone we're looking to hit towards rather than the other way around. With the end approach shot, most players aim just typically at the pin. However, we know for handicapped golfers, actually hitting the green, even if it's further from the pin, is actually still gaining you shots from a strokes game perspective. What we need to consider is the short side and miss to the flag. So we need to understand, is it really, really difficult if we miss short sided, i.e. we're getting nowhere near that flag? Is it tough, but still not the end of the world? Or is it actually quite simple? We're almost in the fringe and we can still put it. So with this pin here, I've only got 110 yards, albeit into wind. So we know we've got plenty of control on the club because we've got plenty of loft. The pin's in the center of the green, but it's at the back. If we go through the back, there's some thick hay. However, that's a little bit further beyond the pin. So we know actually we can be quite aggressive to this flag. And if we go a little bit beyond it, we're only gonna be in a simple bit of fringe and we can still get up and down very easily. So from here, we wanna be going just straight at the flag, trying to carry it nearly all the way there. So you can see I've hit a really good approach shot there to about 10 foot, which is a good birdie chance. That's made a lot easier because it was into wind. I know the ball's not gonna get as far away from me. When we assess this green, we can see that if I was five to 10 yards longer the flag, I'd have still a pretty simple up and down. 
If I was to miss right of the flag, it would still be pretty easy, albeit downhill. But if I was to go left in that bunker or that fixed stuff, I'm bringing in at least a bogey. So if that pin was another three, four yards left, I wouldn't be going at that flag. If that pin was right, I'd almost be aiming in the same spot consistently. So understanding where that miss is, that short-sided miss and how difficult it is, determines whether we just go at a flag or whether we almost have to aim away from the pin a few times. So if I hit a good tee shot in play, a little bit sure further back than I wanted, there's another 20 yards to that bunker. So I could have been a little bit more aggressive there, but you can see fairways downhill. So sometimes we can't always maximize the yardage if we know what the land is like. Now this is a really tight pin to the left and there's a deep, deep bunker left hand side. So a short sided miss is at least gonna be a bogey. So we need to avoid that bunker at all costs and the bunker also moves out into the middle of the green. So that means I've got 150 yard carry to the front edge, but it's 165 to the pin. So I need to select a club that can comfortably cover that front edge, even if that means it brings back of the green in a little bit more because we know that's safe. And my target is actually gonna be near the middle of the green here. So if I pull it, I'm gonna pull it onto the flag. If I hit it dead straight, I'm in the middle of the green. If I push it, I'm still on the green. So we've got, we're trying to create a little bit of room for error based on that shot pattern. Let's give that a go. So this is the perfect example of what we're talking about here. You can see my ball's finished left of the flag. Now we talked about left of the flag being dead if we was going that short-sided miss. I've hit a really poor shot there. If I was calculating that from an A, B, C or D shot, that's a D shot for me. Because I've chosen the correct target and the correct club, a pulled shot has actually left me with a very, very simple up and down. At worst, I'm making five from here, and even on the odd occasion, there's still a good look for birdie. If I'd aimed straight at that flag, I would have been comfortably over here in the rubbish, no shot whatsoever. So choosing the correct target isn't always about necessarily hitting good shots, it's about some of your worst shots being a, a much, much better, much, much scorable position. So par three approach shot is exactly the same as all approach shots. We are choosing the correct target based on the danger and the distance we have into the flag. This flag on this par three is the back right, 150 yards, quite a tight flag. And with a bunker right of that pin, the short sided miss is a very tricky one, but not a really, really hard one. That's key. However, left of the flag, there's lots of room and there's no bunker if we was to miss it left to this flag position. Well, if we go on a straight line to that flag, it actually makes the carry distance a little bit further. So that means if we get a little bit of a miss strike, we're actually bringing in another bunker. So what we're doing here is thinking about how can we aim to a slightly easier target that's got a bit more room for error, but also if we hit the right shot, we're only 20 foot away. If we push it slightly, we're close to that flag. And if we pull it, we're on the edge of the green. So we're making more margin for error and then we're committing to that decision. So we can see the flag's tight to the right I'm gonna aim about five yards left of that flag and just commit to that line. Being less aggressive actually brings my scoring average down, not up, providing the decision is made in a calculated manner. I've hit that bang on my line and that should be no more than 20 foot away and I've gone nowhere near that flag. Good chance for birdie. This is the first on-course strategy video I've done. If you wanna see more of these in the future, leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel. So through selecting the right club and the line off the tee and into your approach shots, naturally reduce the risk of shooting a higher score. We don't have to improve the actual shot quality, just the decision-making on course to shoot lower numbers. Hitting the ball further opens up more options in terms of strategy on the course. If you wanna know how to hit the ball further, watch this video next.